take three. Let's sing the other side. blessing to sing and a joy to think about, isn't it? Amen. 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 We love him because he first loved us. Good to see you this morning in the Lord's house and excited about being here and uh, trust the Lord just going to help us in the service. Uh, Petey, when I give him my outline, he said, well, uh, at least the, the title is interesting. I'm trying to preach this morning on the scent of water from the book of Job chapter 14. He said, I never heard that before and I ain't never preached it before. <laughs> uh, but somebody has, amen. And so we want to trust the Lord to help us. We'll take prayer requests. I see on our monitor, we're reminded of uh, praying for our country uh, at 10 o'clock and maybe it'll come to you mind. It's not come to me every day at 10, but I've been mindful and tried to be praying for our country and how we need to pray. It's a very important uh, crossroads, I believe, that we're at right now. Uh, it's going to make a difference of whether, in my thinking, whether we survive as a country or not. And uh, so let's uh, 
pray and ask the Lord to help us. Uh, we want to come before the Lord in repentance, don't we, as a nation. Ask the Lord to forgive us and ask the Lord to have mercy on us and ask the Lord to help us. So I mentioned that this morning. And uh, maybe there's other requests to be mentioned. I always desire and need your prayers. I try to stand here. And the old time preachers used to repeat this very often and they'd say, nobody stands here alone. Don't take you long to figure that out, does it, preacher? And uh, that's very true. Maybe somebody else got something to mention in prayer. Let's pray this morning. Brother John Muriel, how about praying for us? We welcome you to our service and we're glad you're here. It's just good to see you this morning in the, in the Lord's house. Uh, we want to I got a couple of cards to read. Thank you, cards, to our church. And it says, thank you so much for donating money in Mama's memory to Freedom Baptist Church. This is from Joyce. And then also, Joyce, uh, thanking uh, our church and uh, for the food check. She said, I'll go with my brother and sister to eat. And uh, thanks again, says Joyce. And I'll mention something else, uh, announcement here of a baby share, a drive-by baby share for baby girl driver, Otter and Macy and Jesse. And uh, says, since, since we can't be together today to celebrate, uh, let's share this family for a different kind of way, a drive-by to show our love and support on Sunday, August the 30th, 234, Bethany Baptist Church, uh, registered at Walmart and Amazon, and has a note here, due to the coronavirus, we'll uh, follow the regulations. We'll just have a drive-by event. So you keep that in mind, August the 30th. Again, it's good to be in the Lord's house. And preacher, if the message comes out the way I study, it's going to be good. And uh, the Lord moved on my heart. I trust the Lord this helped me to bring it out. I'm praying. I heard one preacher said, give your message to Jesus. And I'm praying that I'll be able to do that. And just let him have control this morning in the service. And again, it certainly is good to see each of you here this morning. And it's good to be here, isn't it? And the Lord certainly blessed us to be able to be in the Lord's house this morning. I was talking to a, a friend of mine and they'd shared, and, and others have done that, and I might encourage you to do that. It might be kind of evangelistic too. Somebody said this week, said they knew some people that, uh, that maybe would watch something like that on, on the video if they knew about it, and they'd try to pass it on. But anyway, uh, the lady that I was talking with, she said, I want you to uh, share with uh, Petey. I did that, appreciate the video. And she had then shared it with somebody else in, in uh, West Virginia and a friend of hers, and so shared it. And said she called back pretty quickly and said, well, I found it, and I'm watching it now. And I said, well, praise the Lord for that, so... Uh, we pray the Lord will use that and, and maybe it'll be evangelistic too. That's a prayer on my heart, isn't yours? And that Brian in our children's church last Sunday, he had some words for those watching the video. And passed on trust in Jesus, amen. We can't give no better news than that, can we? And no better message. Brian, if you'll come this morning, children's church. <laughs> How you doing, Dylan? I'm doing good. Are you glad to be in church? How about y'all? Are you glad to be in church? Amen. Amen. Bible says in John chapter number 8, verse 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Hang on, Dylan. I got a long one to tell you here. We got a lot to go cover. I right, started last week. It was one of them weeks, right? We had, we'd worked... Uh, started Tuesday, worked Monday, we started Tuesday, worked through Tuesday night, worked into Wednesday late. I finally got off Thursday, right? I'm enjoying this good day Thursday. Friday, Stan calls about 9 o'clock. Stanley, I'm asking, I'm on my way. Back to Hickory we go. I thought, well, I didn't get two days off after all, but we'll make it. 
He calls me when I get over across the river. He says, hey, stop by up here at Granny's. We're going to get some breakfast. I'll buy you breakfast before we go to work. I said, all right. So I pulled in there, and I ordered me some liver mush, and I ordered me an egg, and I ordered me a little bit of uh, grits, right? Got me a cup of coffee. So we're sitting there waiting on that. We're talking back and forth, and I said, you know what? These shoes, my old Merle's here. I've had about 1,000 miles on them. They're about wore out. i got to get me some. Fellow right across there from me, he looks at it. He says, uh, hey, he's a place. He started telling me about Fleet Feet and all them places I know in Hickory. I thought, all right, our food comes out, right? So Stanley says, hold on a minute. He said, we got to pray. So we prayed over our food. Guy looks back in. He starts talking again. He says, well, he said, y'all praying. He said, I want to tell you something. I said, all right. So he went to tell us about uh, how when he was, uh, his grandmother had uh, raised him, right? He'd adopted him, raised him as a kid. And how his grandmother had taken and put him in a, uh, you know, just held him in his arms or her arms and said, God, use him. God, I want you to, for your glory, use him, Right. I said, well, I got a little experience with that. I got one sitting back there in the church now. I said, God's using him. And I held him up all them years ago and said, God, use him. God, use him. And he has. Well, he went on to say, I was mean as a snake in church. He said, didn't care nothing about the church. He said, but I was in church, but I didn't care nothing about it, right? Well, he said, all this wicked stuff he had done went on through that. He said, I ain't proud of none of that. He said, but one day he said he got married and he had some kids. And he said, he's at, what, the day his little five-year-old, he held his little five-year-old, and his little five-year-old had just been run over by a school bus. Held his child in his arms. He said he literally hurt or felt the beat, the last beat of that child's heart in his arms. Yeah, I had the same reaction. I said, holy cow. But he had said, a preacher had asked him before this all happened, he'd ask him, did he, did he, was he saved? You know what he said? He said, God wants me, he can come get me. And then he held his little baby in his arms as that child slipped away. Well, <laughs> he uh, spoke at the funeral of that baby. And he said his mother-in-law said after that that he was, uh, well, you have to be saved after what you just said. Well, he hung his hat on that. He started in church. He became a deacon in that church. He was in church then. But he said something wasn't right. He said something wasn't right. He said, I didn't have a desire to be in church. I didn't have a desire of the things that the Lord, I just did something wasn't right. He said they had revival up uh, back, he called a place up there had a revival and he didn't really want to go but he went on anyway and God got a hold of him in that revival and he said it's just like God said to him you fold around long enough he said he got in that altar he said it was almost like hands holding him down he said we're going to get this right he got saved he got saved well now remember where we're at we're in greatest country kitchen here well Stan's loud mouth and I'm, I'm you know I can talk a little left sometimes and this guy's a pretty loud guy too and I got to realize all of a sudden when this lady walks up to the table she just walks up and I said uh oh and she goes you got to remember what the Bible says after that and I said what's that if the son has made you free you're free indeed I said, hallelujah, she's right. And I got looked around. We was having church right there in greatest country kitchen. Got me going, son. I mean, it was exciting. So then when I go, when we do all this stuff and I go home and we start home, we start home, Dylan. I start home late that night and, and I'm, I'm listening to my Bible. Uh, you know, you can get on the uh, telephone, you know what I'm saying? I'm listening to it going home. And you know what they were? The books were Exodus 20, 20, or Exodus 20, Luke 23, and Job 38. Now listen, here's where I'm going to get to right quick. I'm going to hurry. I promise you I'm going to hurry. But listen, what, in, what it said in Exodus, start with, in uh, verse 24 of chapter number 20, the Bible says, In an altar of earth shalt thou make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, and thy sheep, and thine oxen. Now listen, in all places where I recorded my, or record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. Where's God recorded his name today? Well, he recorded it Friday over there, right there in Granny's Country Kitchen. He recorded it in this very earth that he created. 
He don't even need help. Listen, he said, if you're going to make an altar 25, if thou wilt uh, make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it with hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. He don't even need our help to build that altar. He said, take what I've done done, which is those stones laid on the ground. Uh, build them up in the altar and you sacrifice what you got. What do we got to give God? That ain't his already. Not one single thing but this. We got the sin that's in our life that we can sacrifice in that altar to him. We give it to him. That's all we got. You need help? Do we need it? Does God need help doing his thing? Well, Job said, listen, 38, 4, uh, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Uh, declare it if thou hast understanding. Uh, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest her? Who hath stretched the line upon it? Where were we at when God laid the foundation of this world? I didn't help him do it. I can't half build a house. I can't half do the things on this earth. But he laid the foundation of this world. He recorded his name upon this earth. Yeah? All right then. Over there, listen, we got over to Luke in. Boy, this is good out here. 23 and 43, or 42 says, And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou hast come into my, thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. What in the world did that thief have to offer Jesus? Not a thing but his sins. And if you read prior to that, how they made fun of him, how they beat him, how they hung him on that tree. But yet through that, when that thief asked him, Lord, remember me, He saved him. On that cross, that old boy there had sort of the same problem. We're talking that RC there. He just he couldn't get a hold of it until God got a hold of him. So God recorded his name on earth. God recorded his name on the offerings we bring. God's recorded his name on the cross of Calvary. God has recorded uh, his name at Granny's. And God recorded his name on at least four people over yonder I know of in grannies. And God recorded his name on that thief's heart. Right here across my heart, God's name is recorded. And if it's recorded right there, he said he'd come to me. And he said he'd bless me. And I think this country needs some blessing. And if he recorded his name upon this nation... And don't nobody want to argue, go ahead and argue with me. I'm going to tell you it was founded upon God's very word, why its place is here. Argue it if you want to, but it's the truth. And he recorded his name on it. And if he recorded his name, he said he'd come unto us and he'd bless us. We got to get our hearts right. I hope it helped you and I hope it come across. It was hard to get it all back together, but I did. I couldn't wait. I Friday I said, I can't wait to tell Dylan this. I can't wait to tell Dylan this. Because it just it energized my heart that God is still God. And through the COVID and through all the other mess and whatever, that little lady, she don't know what a blessing she was, walk up. I said, Hallelujah. There's some people squirming in that place, you believe that? <laughs> it's all right. Maybe they got a little dose of what they need. I did. Prayer request, son. Amen. Let's pray for the country. Let's just pray. They have the Father come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that God, how you'll show up, Lord. And God, how you can. I got through just a simple conversation, Lord, about you. God, you excite my heart, and I praise you for that, Lord. I pray, Lord, that for within this church, with this church, God, we'd get on fire. We'd get, God, with excitement, Lord. Uh, God, seeing the opportunity, Lord, that's before us, Lord, to proclaim Jesus, God, in all that we do. I pray, Lord, for Dylan. I pray, God, you'll bless him. God, help him through now this school, the situation with school, and the COVID. Lord, I just pray, Lord, you'll be with him, each one. Help him, encourage him, bless him, Lord. I pray, Father, for a pastor. God, help him to... Preach the word of God, Lord. He's excited, Lord. You give him that morsel, God. Just help him, Lord. Preach the word of God, Lord, today. Lord, just put it, God, this deep in my heart. You recorded your name, Lord, in my heart. And I thank you for that, Lord. You saved my soul, Lord. And God, how you'll save, Lord. All we got to do is ask. Just simply ask, Lord, you'd save us. I pray, Father, you'll move, Lord, today in the service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
have any birthdays this morning. Not we'll ask our ushers to come and uh, receive our offering this morning. Let's stand and sing together hymn 359. <clears throat> hymn 359. Job this morning, chapter 14, if you'll find your place there this morning, and I trust the Lord will help us. We read some verses there, and uh, our assignment this week, very easy assignment, read Isaiah chapter 12, and I think it's got six verses, so that'll be easy, won't it? Isaiah chapter 12, I want to use a verse from there, the Lord willing, uh, here in a few minutes, and I'm trying to preach on the scent of water and trust the Lord to help us in the message. And we'll look at some things from this chapter. And I'll be quite honest from the very outset this morning in reading the book of Job. In fact, I've been reading through. Uh, uh, I've got a chronological uh, study Bible and uh, been reading through and I'm in the book of Job now. And uh, so uh, I'm moving a little slow. Uh, a lot of things I don't understand uh, from this book in the book of Job. I do want to say one thing at the outset. As we look at this and some of the things that I, if I'm understanding it correctly from this chapter, uh, we see Job in this chapter uh, wavering in mind and thought uh, from despair to hope. And then again from hope to despair. And we would say at the outset, nothing to be critical to say of Job for being in despair as we understand from the book of Job his circumstances, situation of losing all of his possessions, losing his family and his health and so and, and being in pain here 
And so he's looking at things, some things here about man, about life. And says some things here that I trust the Lord will help us with as we look into this. So we're reading the book of Isaiah chapter 12 for our assignment. In the book of Job chapter 14, very familiar, there's two verses here that stand out that I've thought about many times and that most would be familiar with when you say the book of Job. There's some of the verses that just stand out that we know and remember from the book of Job. And verse one is such a verse. And it said, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. I've quoted that maybe many times. I remember that uh, from the book of Job. And then verse 14 of this chapter, very familiar verse that we remember and have, have mentioned. It said, if a man dies, shall he live again? And all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Then we go back to verse one. Man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeteth as a shadow and continueth not. And dost thou open thine eyes upon such a one and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one? See, in his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud, and bring forth boughs like a plant. But if man dieth and wasteth away, yet man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the privilege of being here in the Lord's house, each one this morning in attendance. I pray, Lord, a special blessing upon every heart. May you just uh, meet the need and may the Word of God find a resonating place, uh, Lord, in our hearts that we might hear from heaven and not just hear a message delivered, but it'd be a message that the Lord would speak. And I trust that would be true. And then those that are watching by way of video, we, we want to say thank you, Lord for your provision, uh, your uh, opportunity of doing this that you've given us. And Lord, we just praise you. May it go forth, and I pray for those that will view. Lord, I pray for each one, maybe, that would hear and see. And Lord, those that are unsaved and lost, uh, they'll be on the sound of this message. I pray that be saved for Christ's sake. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we'll look at this and try to think and one of the things that I, if, if you put that up for me, is something that I read and I thought that's worth pinning down. I said already that Joseph, or Job is going from despair to hope and from hope to despair in these verses. Uh, but something I read that's worth repeating, and it said when you say a situation or a person is hopeless, uh, you're slamming the door in the face of God. Now let that soak in just a little bit. I thought that, and I don't want to just hurry over that, but I want us to think about that. When you say a situation or a person is hopeless, then you're slamming the door in the face of God. You say, why would you say that, preacher? Because Jesus said that with God, nothing shall be impossible. God asked Abraham the question in the book of Genesis, is anything too hard for the Lord? And let me say at the very outset that whenever you figure God into the equation, there is always hope. Whenever we say there is no hope of a situation or no hope for a person, then we're slamming the door in the face of God. I'm thanking God this morning that with him, thank God there's hope. Now, I want to give me verse uh, Romans 15, 13 in relation to that. And it says in that verse, now the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. Praise God, you and I that are believers this morning, the Bible said we're abounding in hope. Praise God, we got all kind of hope, amen? And what a blessing, abounding in hope through the power of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Thank God we're abounding in hope. And so we see in these verses that Job is considering and talking and thinking about hope. 
And to him, it, as he wavers in mind, in these verses, on, on, he's, thinking in, in, uh, he's thinking in one uh, terms that all hope's gone. There is no hope. And then on the other side, we see Job with his faith and his hope still intact. We see him as he makes a very definite statement in the book of Job chapter 19 and a very statement of assurance that I know that my Redeemer liveth. And we thank God for that. Our verses in verse 14, chapter 14, is somewhat different as we see as Job is thinking about life, thinking about man. And he goes into very first, and that's three of my points to start with. And he said, man that is born of woman is few days. He's a few days. And so it is in life. Life passes us up, don't it? And as my mother used to say, and maybe your parents the same, they'd say, time sure does fly. Was a kid, it just crept. But since I've got a little older, time does fly. Mama was right. And so we see that. It's like few days. And then there's full of, there's a lot of trouble. And then it's like a flare that's just cut down. We have several flares there at the house. I love flares. My grandpa on my daddy's side loved flares. And my grandma on mama's side, she loved flares. And so, you know, it's a little odd that back then that a man loved flowers. My dad, he had mow them down sometime. He wasn't a lover of flowers. He didn't appreciate it. But as, as he aged on, he softened up and he saw the beauty of flowers. And we have flowers there. Some of them bloom and the, and the blooming short-lived. But we've got some other flowers that'll bloom till frost. But then they'll die. It's like a flower. They'll be gone. I bought Beverly this week. My sister said, what's the occasion? No occasion. I bought her a bouquet of flowers. So we brought it home, got, our, got a vase and put them in it, and our vase was quite large. So Beverly made the suggestion, you know, it'd be good if, we'd, if you'd have bought two bouquets of flowers for the vase. <laughs> but I made a counter suggestion, and I said, let's get a smaller vase. Amen. So, but anyway, the flowers were appreciated, beautiful, and they are. I, I looked at them this morning, yesterday, put a little more water in them, and they'll last for a while, and of course, then they'll fade. Job's thinking about life. He's thinking about man, and he said it's kind of like a flower. It's here, and, and it blooms, and then it begins, to, some of my flowers in my baskets are declining now. They're not as pretty as they was earlier. Uh, but uh, the flare, and then he said, life's like a shadow. We see it, and then it's gone, and then it's gone forever. Job is reckoning with this as we go on in this chapter, and then he asks the question, if man die, shall he live again? And then my text this morning and my verse is this, but let's look at one before I get there. He says in verse 4, Job asked the question, and he said, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? And he said, not one. Job is thinking, and in this verse we see that, and most scholars believe that Job's the oldest book in the Bible. Now we need to keep in mind this morning that Job did not have the scriptures that you and I have to read and to, to place confidence in, such as Second uh, Timothy Chapter 1, verse 10. If you give us that verse this morning, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. And the Bible said in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 10. You've got 1 Timothy. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1 and verse 10. And in that verse, in verse 10 of 2 Timothy, it says that God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus, has made manifest appearing our Savior Jesus Christ and who have abolished death and have brought uh, life and immortality to light through the gospel. The Lord has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now Job says in our verse four, who can bring an unclean thing, uh, uh, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? And he said, not one. And Job is believing and understanding the, the original sin that by man's sin entered into the world and all the descendants of Adam have the sin nature. And Job is reckoning about man. And he said, who could bring a clean thing out of an unclean? And as he thinks about that, he's thinking in relation to man. And he said, not one. 
because something that's unclean and man with the sin nature and, and, and he, he's thinking and we think about the animal kingdom, they beget like, like begets like, the same. And so it is with man, with the sinful nature and man begets an offspring that also has the sinful nature. And Job is reasoning with man and he said, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean. And Job concludes that not one can do that. But thank God as we go over into the New Testament, we see that God, as I said, whenever you say that a situation is hopeless and that a, that a person is hopeless, you're slamming the door in the face of God. I'm glad, thank God, there's one that can bring a clean thing out of an unclean. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ he can take us when we're in an unclean position, thank God, and make us clean. He says in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 3, and he said, now are you clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. I'm glad that Jesus can take an unclean thing and make it clean. Thank God he can take a sinner and make a saint, amen. And he can even take a dead person and make him alive again. Thank God this morning, the Lord Jesus, the answer to that verse is Jesus Christ himself. Now we see in the book of John chapter three, and Job is thinking, no doubt, that 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 is born of flesh is flesh, and that is true. But the new birth remedies that, that that's born of the spirit is spirit, thank God, and we must be born again, and that's how God brings a clean thing out of an unclean. We experience a new birth, thank God, and we start all over, amen, and ain't that a blessing? I mean, we don't have no history then. You say, well, you've got a history, and we've all got a history, but I'm glad the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, and he wipes it out. And we're washed in the blood, thank God, the book of Revelation says. And Jesus can bring a clean thing out of an unclean. And then we go on, and Job begins to think. And he's thinking about man, and he said man's, uh, his, his numbers, their days are numbered, and his, his, they are determined, and, and God has him bound in. And, and then he says in verse 6, he said, if you would just give man some rest, now, Job's in a turmoil situation here. And he said, if you could just give him some rest till he accomplished as a hireling of his day. And then he says in verse 7, for there is hope of a tree. And Job begins to reason here, and he's thinking about man. And as I said, we must keep in mind this morning, he did not have 1 Corinthians chapter 15 to read, the great resurrection chapter. He did not have the other gospels that you and I can read of resurrection. There is resurrection verses in the Old Testament that are mentioned about the, the dead raising again. So Job's thinking about this and he's wondering about man. And Job begins to just observe things and he says, there's more hope for a tree than there is man. And he said, a tree can be cut down and leave the stump and then the sin of water it can come by and the tree in verse uh, 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 nine of our chapter. And he said, yet through the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth boughs uh, like a plant. The tree will come alive again. Now, this is, I've, and you've seen that experience, had that experience. I've cut down a tree there and left the stump up kind of high and it grew up, uh, it started budding again, started growing. It had some life in it. I cut down some shrubbery one time and cut it real low and I was really doing a prune job. I found out I don't know nothing about pruning or cutting or whatever. And so my uncle come by and he said, Roger, you might as well just pull that up. I said, that's dead. And from all appearances, it looked dead to me. But you know what? The next year is up back as high as it was originally. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, it was there close to the carport and my sweet wife didn't like it too good. So she got somebody to pull it up by the roots and that did take care of it and uh, finish that off. But anyway, it says, Job said there's more hope of the tree than there is man. And you know, we see something in the, I got to thinking about that. It said the scent of water. Now the, Job here is among the poetic books. 
Poetic is a magistive. People that write poems and verse, they use an imagination. And they use figurative language to describe something, to explain something else. And so it is in my message and my title this morning is the scent of water. It's a beautiful statement and phrase this morning and it just blessed my heart and you said, well, I'm not as excited about it as you are. Well, maybe it'll hit you and catch you later on and you'll begin to think about the scent of water. And Job said a tree cut down. You know, it's interesting. I got to thinking about that and I thought, you know, in the book of Daniel, there's something else about cutting a tree down and leaving the stump. And I don't know why God put that there, but it excited me in studying the message. I said, thank God. I found something to go along with it. That's always a blessing, ain't it, preacher? Dr. John Rice one day looking through his Bible and his dear wife asked him and said, honey, what are you doing? And he said, I'm trying to find some verses to go with my sermon. Uh, so anyway, in the book of Daniel, <laughs> God's good, ain't he? I'm having fun. In the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, he ruled, as I understand it, all the known world. And he had a dream. And none of his people could interpret the dream, but he found Daniel, which could interpret. And the dream that he had was this great big tree grew up. And it was huge. And the branches, said the fowls of the air, they found uh, refuge in the branches. And the beast of the field, they found refuge underneath the tree. And it was such a great thing. And he dreams that. Yes, Daniel said, what's that mean? And then he saw the tree cut down and all the stump was left. And Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar this. He said, you've not recognized God. But what God's going to do and what he's showing you is that your kingdom's great. It's like a huge tree. And the branches are far-reaching. You've got a great kingdom. But God's going to cut it down. And he's going to cut you down. And he's going to humble you until you realize and understand that the Most High is the one that rules and has got the kingdom of kingdoms. And that his dominion is from everlasting to everlasting. Nebuchadnezzar makes that statement and that acknowledgement later after he went through what he went through. You know the story of what he went through. He was, he was like a beast out in the field and God cut him down for maybe about a 12-month period and he, and he used the example of a tree. And he said, we're cutting the tree down, but he said, wait a minute, leave the stump and let the dew from heaven water it. My verse this morning, the scent of water. Job said the tree seems to have more hope than man himself because if it's cut down, that tree through the scent of water will bud again. As I said, it's a magistive. It's poetic, the scent of water. And what he's saying so beautiful this morning is that that stump inhales the scent of water. As it were, that's the picture. And as it begins to do that, the scent of water, and the water begins to do the vital work that it can do, then the watering of the stump here, as the stump in the book of Daniel, the dew began to fall upon it, and then Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, as the stump grew back and sprouted again, so did his kingdom, and God brought it back to him. But God only brought it back to him when Nebuchadnezzar realized that God rose, that the Most High is the one that has dominion from everlasting to everlasting. J. Vernon McGee said the best thing any person, individual can ever do is you realize that God's in charge. And whenever you do that, you'll always down the road. You're getting somewhere where you need to be then that God is in charge. And Job talks about the hope of a tree. Seemed like it's greater he said, then the hope of man. And he goes on and he begins to talk. And he said, as the waters of the sea and the flood uh, decay if and dry if up, so man life down. And he riseth not again till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. Job's wondering about man. And then he ponders the question, 
He said, if man die, shall he live again? He goes, as I said already, in this chapter, then he goes in verse 15, and he said, thou shalt call, and I will answer thee, thou will have a desire to the work of thy hands. Job has some faith showing up here. Job said, you're going to call one day, and I'm going to answer. Job's trouble here, he's going from despair to hope, then he goes on in verse 19, and he's thinking again. And you could see how easily it'd be to fall into a state of despondency. Let's just be honest this morning. Sometimes things can be just great and wonderful for us, and we'll go around with a sour face and grumble about everything that happens. Shame on us, amen. You say, well, you just throw that in. That's a negative aspect. Well, I thought I'd wake us all up, amen. You know, we're not critical of Job this morning. Many of us have suffered and you have things and sorrows of life. That's understandable. But I hardly know a person that lost everything they had and lost all their kids at one time, have you? And then lost their health. And Job's wondering, what is life? It seems to me that there's a lot of trouble, he says. I look at a tree that can spout, sprout back through the scent of water. And he said, I'm wondering about life. He goes on in verse 19 of our chapter, and we see some more despondency as Job thinks. And he said, the waters were the stone, and thou washest away things that grow out of the dust of the earth, and thou destroyest the hope of man. Verse 19, Job said, the hope of man is like a mountain falling, like the water washing the earth away the hope of man. It's like stones being removed, he said. And we see that. He said, y'all destroys the hope of man. But I don't thank God this morning that in verse chapter 19, Job through life and through thinking and the questions of life, he comes to a great assurance and he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Amen. And I'll see him again, he said. When the skin worm destroy this flesh, I'll see him again. My Redeemer liveth. What a blessing. And then I want to think, this, that's my first message, and I'm just wanting to preach all and on this morning. I mean, I hope everybody's got plenty of time, you know, whatever. You know, we used to say that the old time preachers talking about cooking the beans and the beans burning and everything. Well, there ain't much bean cooking going on now. You know, we <laughs> but like what husband got up and said, what's for breakfast? And his wife said, you can shake a bowl of, a box of cereal as good as I can. Amen. And we just get going. Amen. I've done had my Cheerios. Amen. I mix, I mix, I mix the little frosted flakes with it. And I eat a large helping of that every morning. A seven ounce cup and don't even fill it full. And you say, what do you even bother with it for? Well, anyway, <laughs> I don't know. It's just a habit, you know, of life. But we're going on water the scent of water. You know, God in his word uses water figuratively of salvation. He talks a whole lot about water. Our verse in, in Isaiah chapter 12, verse three, and it said, with joy, I'll draw water out of the wells of salvation. Whenever the woman at the well was talking to Jesus and in John chapter four and verse 14, and Jesus said to her, he said, the water that you're gonna draw out of the well, you're gonna thirst again. But he said, I'll give you water where you'll never thirst again. And it'll be a well of water in you springing up into everlasting life, water. Very figurative, the last invitation in the Bible in the book of Revelation, chapter 22. And it said, the bride say, come, and whosoever will say, come, and let him that is a thirst come and take the water of life freely. Salvation figuratively compared to water. Our word, the word of God is compared to water. Ephesians chapter five, the washing of water by the word. This word will wash you up and clean you up, just keep reading it and reading it, and it'll wash and clean your life up. You know, it's pretty evident sometimes in our life when we're getting away from God. You say, what's happened, preacher? There's two things primarily happens when we do that as a Christian. 
Number one, we've got away from prayer. And number two, we've got away from the word of God. I liked a little illustration. I've used it so many times. I may have told it a hundred times here. But about the little boy on the porch, his grandmother had asked him that she had a, a wicker basket there. And she said, how about taking some water and washing that basket up? Well, he poured some water in it and a wicker basket. The water just ran through it. And so she said, pour some more in it. And he said, Grandma, there ain't no use. That water's just running through. So he did that three or four times at Grandma's request. And she said, now look at the basket. And he looks at it and she said, don't it look cleaner than it was? And he said, yeah, that mud daubers and them, them cobwebs, spider webs is not in there anymore. They've washed out. And she said, that's how the word of God will do you. Whenever it's going through you, it'll clean you, amen. <laughs> the little boy had complained to grandma that reading the Bible, he didn't get nothing out of it and he didn't understand it. And grandma said, just keep reading it anyway. And that's my advice and that's what I believe this morning. And you say, what about the book of Job chapter 14? And I've read it several times in trying to prepare this message and a lot of things I don't understand in there, but praise God, just running through me, help me, Amen. And I didn't grasp it all and get a hold of all of it. But thank God I'm excited this morning that the tree can sprout again through the scent of water. In the book of John chapter 7, there's having the Feast of Tabernacles. And in the great Feast of Tabernacles, one of the things that they did there was that they got water out of the pool of Siloam and poured it on the sacrifice. Water. You remember when they was in battle and David asked his men, three of them, I believe, and he was away from Jerusalem and the battle was uh, on and, and, and David said, oh, I wished I had some of that water in Jerusalem. And the three men broke through and brought David, the king, some water. Water has an important place in the word of God. In the book of John, chapter 7, there, the great day of the feast, the Bible said, in about verse 37 and 38, Jesus said this, he stood there at the last day of the feast, the Bible said, and he cried out. And he said, if any of you thirst, come to me and drink. And he that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. The next verse said that he spoke that concerning the Spirit. Praise God, the Holy Spirit compared to rivers of flowing water. Good to be saved, ain't it? I'm excited. You say, I never heard such a tangled up mess in all my life. I've enjoyed presenting it. Now, I want you to know that. And the scent of water, praise God. I'm excited. And Job said, there's hope for a tree. I'm glad, thank God, this morning that if you're not saved and you don't know Jesus, there's hope, thank God. There is water from the wells of salvation. If you drink the water that the woman at the well got a hold of, it'll spring up in your life and in your heart with, and for life everlasting, amen. Jesus can give you water where you'll never thirst again. I might say this morning, he's the water of life, amen. And I'm glad, thank God, I rejoice in my heart. I got a drink of that, amen. amen. Thank God so did the woman at the well. You said, what's the evidence of that? She went running into town and said, I want you to come see a man. I want you to come and see a man. And you and I that are saved, we're till, still telling people, as Brian had the opportunity there over a meal, amen, to tell somebody, there's one that can set you free and you'll be free indeed. And his name's Jesus, amen. And we're still telling and sharing that. And I'm excited about it this morning. There's within my heart and within my soul, and so there is in yours. He that believeth on me, Jesus said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. We can be filled with the Spirit of God. Thank God, the scent of water. Let's stand for prayer this morning. And I wonder why we're standing there, heads bowed, and eyes closed for a moment of prayer. I want to ask this morning, each one that's under the sound of this voice, and each one that maybe will come through YouTube and they'll push the button, they'll hear the sermon through the video. If you don't know Jesus, you can be saved and trust him. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. 
Lord, we see from the Word of God that you figuratively use water, something that is a necessity to life that we must have, something that can quench the thirst like nothing else, water. We praise you this morning. And you use that to help us to understand as human beings. And you made it simple where everybody could get a hold of it. Salvation to the Lord Jesus that we can come and drink we that are thirsty. And Lord, I pray as the sound and the message goes out that the Holy Spirit of God would speak to hearts, maybe those that are not saved. And may you speak to their heart and they'd get thirsty for God. And they'd come to him and drink and be saved by the grace of God. And understanding what he did for them on Calvary, that he can indeed make a clean thing out of an unclean. And we that are lost and sinners and without God, that he can save us and lift us up and make new people out of us, born again by the grace of God. May you help us, Lord. and May you move, we pray. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 37. selection. Praise God. What a blessing. This corruptible one day must put on incorruption. And this mortal is going to put on immortality. And so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then she'll be brought to saying the past, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? Thanks be unto God, which gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
If a man die, shall he live again? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. What a Savior. Good to know Jesus, ain't it? Amen. We started out how I love Jesus. Amen. We ended up very good, didn't we? There's a fountain, thank God, filled with blood. Ain't that a blessing? Amen. And sinners can still plunge beneath the flood and lose all the gift of stain. What a blessing. I'm justified in the sight of God. Something I had nothing to do with, but he did it for me. Hallelujah. Good to know him, ain't it? I feel like a runner. I'm getting my second win. God's good, ain't he? Amen. Brian, how about dismissals?